Welcome to Rack Solid Productions, where in this video we are going to check out the Pound HD Link cable for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Hi there, and welcome to Rock Solid Productions. If this is your first time to the channel, I want to take a second. Thank you for stopping by. It really does mean a lot for you guys and gals out there to check out what we have going on here on the channel. If you do like what you see here, do me a favor, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you really like what we do, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. So, Castlemania Ryan recently sent me this bad boy here. This is the Pound HD Link cable for the PlayStation 2 but it's also designed for the PlayStation 1. It's the same connector type. And basically what this is, is a plug and play solution to allow you to output HDMI connections straight from either your PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1. Now, one thing to note on here too, I actually have this, this is coming through my PlayStation 3, and this is actually a digital download of Crash Bandicoot. What we're going to do is we're gonna show you how it comes out of the box. It's pretty simple and straightforward, and we're gonna try some games with each system to check out how setup works in addition to just how the games look. So let's head on over to the bench and check out how the Pound HD Link cable for the PlayStation 1 and 2 comes out of the box. The Pound HD Link cable for the PlayStation 2 is pretty simple and straightforward, kind of like what you would expect. Let's pull it out of the box along with the manual. Don't need that anymore. Uh, HD Link for the Sony PlayStation 2, it's a quick start guide. Basically you take it and you plug it in. Um, let's see, it's a plug and play solution. However, some options on the PlayStation 2 may need to be changed for full compatibility. This quick start will walk you through enabling these options. Please note the majority of PS2 games output 480i. The Pound HD Link cable forces 720p resolution in order to maximize compatibility with modern TVs. Game titles that have the option of playing in higher resolutions will be forced to 40i and upsampled to 720p. PS1 games will likewise be forced to 720p resolutions. Uh, these steps may be necessary if your image is tinted green due to component settings. Uh, turn on the PS2 without a disc or while the disc tray is open. Scroll down until you reach component video out and make sure that RGB is selected. So uh, we will make sure to do that as we go through and set this up. Now inside the package we have the, I'm going to just call it the adapter because really that's what it is. It's the PS1, PS2 style connection adapter to go to HDMI, which we'll set aside there. There's two other cables in here. What do we have these for? Let's see. It looks like a power cable. It's micro USB. So you do need to provide power on the side here. And then an HDMI cable, which is cool. To plug it in, it's pretty simple. We have our fat PS2 here that I really need to clean up. And basically, it just plugs in right like so. It's a kind of tight fit, which isn't terrible. I mean, and the good thing too is the fact that before, component video was the best video quality we could get out of a PS1 or a PS2. And this will now get us an HDMI output. Now, one other thing, just as a heads up, is I am using an EasyCap 284 to capture my video footage. I've heard issues with other similar adapters for either the original Xbox or for the Dreamcast not working with Elgato's, so this is actually what I use to capture. Let's check it out. So I'll admit my PlayStation and PlayStation 2 collection isn't as big as it used to be, but I do have some titles, and I will say, Looking on screen, this is a great sign. My capture card is allowing video to pass. I'm seeing the recording light on. It's hoping for the best. We had the original crash showing on our PlayStation 3 playing digitally. Let's see how the original disc looks. Now, uh, one of the things, like I say, I am currently working on building up my PlayStation and PlayStation 2 um, collection again. I actually don't have any memory cards right now, so... What you see is what you get, pretty much. Um, I am using a DualShock controller. I do have the original controller. I just wanted to use this one instead. So here we are diving into Crash, and it's actually funny, what you didn't see off camera there was I have two PlayStation 1s. Uh, the one that I thought worked doesn't. The one that I thought didn't work does, so uh, let's load it up here. This actually looks really good. Um, it doesn't look much different to me. I mean, just blind taste test, essentially. Uh, I don't have them side by side, but looks 
pretty similar to me to the uh, PlayStation 3 version. So here we have Crash on the beach. Colors look good. And this is a game actually I've been playing lately with the, um, the re-release on the Switch. And let's see, does it support? Nope, does not support analog sticks. So, and yes, I did hit the button on it. Sound effects on this game are great. I clearly need to play this version more. I just love the sound effects when you knock some an enemy off the side of the display. The, the kind of gunshot sound. Ooga booga. This is, I mean, I'm very impressed with this already. Um, it looks really good. Now, now, this could be just the way that either I'm capturing or my settings on my display. It does look a little bit on the dark side, but that's something, like I say, I can go back and check my settings on my TV. Um, generally, I keep the brightness turned fairly low uh, when I am filming in front of this just because it throws off the the brightness and the contrast and everything in front of the TV when I am filming. A little tip for you, those of you out there who are working on YouTube channels that you can uh, use in the future. There's the first level on Crash. I can't complain a whole lot. What we're going to do, we're going to reset, pop that open. Now, one of my favorite games, don't kill me, don't yell at me, don't scream at me, um, was Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I actually saw this movie in the theater nine times. Nine times. And as such, like I mentioned, I have two PlayStations here. Um, because I thought that that one was the one that didn't work. Um, but I always liked the game. I thought the game was really fun. Now, on this, you probably won't hear much audio because LucasArts tends to copyright claim any John Williams music. So... You're not going to hear anything on this one. But at least we can check and see what it looks like. I thought it was so cool for the PlayStation 1 to have scenes from the movie in the game. This is one of the... I know, it. I'm old. But that was really cool to me at that time. Now, one thing about this game is the fact that it is very blocky. I mean, but that's just the generation games that... You know, was out at this point in time. This does support the analog stick, which is cool. Yeah, I don't like you. So the right analog stick basically is duck and roll. You're kind of stuck with what you have here for camera view, which is kind of craptastic. Yeah, the cameras back in the day with these were just so bad. But you can see for what this game was back in the day, this actually looks really good. This is really one of the first Star Wars games that I can remember. It may have been the first one for the PlayStation. Ah, Droid Decuz. So, Star Wars Episode One looks decent. Let's move on to our last PlayStation 1 game, and perhaps one of my favorite series of all time between the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. It's Gran Turismo. Let's check it out. Now, I know Gran Turismo is one of those series that it hasn't aged well, but back in the day, man, these were awesome looking games. And not only that, the music was phenomenal. Uh, we're gonna go to arcade mode. And one thing I hadn't pointed out beforehand was the fact we are in widescreen, which is really cool. We'll do normal. Um, let's see, oh, I can pick the NSX. Let's see what else we have. I am a huge NSX fan. Ooh! Got a little loose going through that corner there. It's 
clearly been too long since I've played this game. Never left. I don't know why it changed my view there all of a sudden. That was weird. Oh, counter steered and screwed that one up. I swear I'm not this bad at racing games. Again, it's one of those where it's getting loose. I'm trying to counter steer and it just not, uh, not what I remember. Ooh. And it could be the controller. Too. Ah, probably not the controller. It's probably just that I haven't played this in so long. And this is the consumer version of the NSX. Not there, it changed my view again on me. That's really bizarre. Oh, pull a Danny Sullivan there, spin. But can we do the win? That was terrible. I'm actually really digging what this looks like for the PlayStation 1, but it's called the HD Link Cable for the PlayStation 2. We gotta check that bad boy out. We're gonna do that next. So just like in the manual, it discussed if you have the green display like this. We're gonna go to System Configuration, and we are going to Video Out, switch to RGB. Perfect, it did exactly what we needed it to do. Awesome, super simple. Screen size full, we'll do 16 by nine. And for our first game, it's actually going to be one that I have never played and just recently picked up, and that's Jackson Daxter. I love the, the Ratchet and Clank games. I've always been a fan. And my understanding is if you like those, you'll like these. I just recently picked this up for what I pay, four bucks. Let's check it out out here the fonts and everything looks super clean on there that's nice i like that this looks pretty sharp i mean for not a hardcore playstation fan i'm digging what i'm seeing here i mean i i've owned every playstation i own every one now i've got a ps1 a ps2 a ps3 ps4 um we're gonna go to new game now, again, I am using the same DualShock controller. This is actually the only one that I have for the PS2 and the PS1. Hey, after a five minute cutscene, we finally get to play and do something. Okay, so very much controlling very much like Ratchet and Clank. Color wise, I'll say it does look a lot not better, but sharper than the um, PlayStation 1. Uh, or not even sharper, it's it's brighter. The greens look super sharp, I'm digging that. I guess I could have just jumped. There we go. Oh, I'm digging the controls. Except for the camera. The camera is the one thing I'm not thrilled with. Um, but Jackson Daxter looks decent. I mean, it's what I would expect out of a PS2 game. Yeah, I mean, it's even looking at the draw distance in the background and everything. Things look pretty sharp. Um, again, being a Star Wars fan... Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, another game I just really liked. Again, much like the PlayStation 1 Star Wars game, I'm going to keep the volume pretty low on this just because Lucasfilm likes to copyright strike anything with their audio in it. So uh, we'll check this out here. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, before war, Star Wars Episode 8 completely divided the fan base. If I remember right, this game actually starts us off uh, over Coruscant, just like the movie. It follows the movie pretty closely. Play control, I mean, is exactly as I remember it. There's, you know, I'm not feeling, even on the PlayStation 1 version, or, or when playing on the PlayStation 1, 
Um, did not feel uh, any lag or anything. And, um, you know, it's one of those good things, too, that, uh, you know, using the wired controllers, you don't tend to have the issues with that that you do with wireless controllers a lot of time. This looks really good. That almost sounds like the same voice actor who does the voice of Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars. I'm I'm very impressed with how this looks. It's now this does have a little bit of a soft look, but that may actually be the game itself. That was cool. Forgot how much I like this game. But then it's most of the Star Wars games I always really liked on both the PS1 and the PS2. Well, pretty much most Star Wars games I've enjoyed. Again, the, the audio and everything on this just, it sounds great. Again, I wish I could leave it up just for you guys. Um, but video-wise, I'm digging this a lot. It's one of those things where I've, I've never disliked the PlayStation 2. I've always really liked it. Um, it's kind of like the GameCube. Now that I can play it via HDMI, I think I'm likelier to play it more often. Overall, I'm I'm really happy with how this is playing right now. I've, I've forgotten how much I've really liked this game. Um, and it's a lot of fun, and it's relatively inexpensive, too. Um, that's actually a good thing that, as of right now, PlayStation 2 games have not seen the, the stupid expensive cost for a lot of the top-tier games that, like, NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, Genesis games have seen. All right, I could play this game all day. We're going to move on to our last game. And this is perhaps my favorite series of all time on any PlayStation system. And I love the dialogue. I love the action. I love the story. And it's Ratchet and Clank. I have... This is probably, no, it is, I enjoy this series more than I enjoy Earthworm Jim. And part of it, just because there's so many games out there for it, we only got three Earthworm Jim titles. Yes, there were remasters and whatnot, but if you've never played Ratchet and Clank, I highly recommend all of the games, even the, pl the PlayStation 4 remaster or re-release of the original game, so much fun. And like I say, it's a funny game it's they put a lot of thought into the dialogue and everything that goes on uh from captain copernicus j quark ratchet and clank themselves it's just it's a fun series i really recommend it now the one thing that i absolutely love about ratchet and clank the weapons that you have um there are yes i'm going to continue anyways there are so many awesome weapons in all of these games that the more you use them the better they get uh, unlike a lot of games where you kind of have to conserve them to be able to use them later on. Uh-uh. With Ratchet and Clank, you need to start using your weapons because they will get stronger the more you use them. And if you like games where you have to collect things, you will absolutely love Ratchet and Clank. It's also one of those two where as you go through and play the game, good lord, this... I will say this does almost look as good as the PlayStation 3 version of, uh, what was it, Quest for Booty? Eh, not that sharp, but it's darn good! I was not expecting it to look this good. Yeah, this is just, it's such a great series. And they haven't made a new Ratchet and Clank since the movie came out, which is too bad. Because it, like I say, it just, it's so fun. Now, how do you switch your weapons? Uh, we're going to go back to the Shock Blaster. And we're going to check out what's down here. Oh, here we go. That's basically what I was just trying to do. Now, and again, it's one of those where... Oh, there we go. Yeah, buddy. Got him. Um, you know, you may be tempted to hang on to... Uh, ammo and whatnot as you go along and there is some of that to that deciding when uh, to use different weapons and whatnot but there's also one of those where the more you use it you will eventually get powered up here and your weapons will gain more strength Let's see did I miss anything back here yes I did hmm 
had that issue again crop up like I did in Gran Turismo. I wonder if I've got an issue with my controller, which would not surprise me. Boxes, boxes, and more boxes. We love bolts. There we go. Anything up here? Nope. But I mean, that's... I've already done that. This is, like I mentioned, if you... Oh, damn it. If you, if you like treasure hunting type games, if you like games where you have to... Not have to, but you have the option of going back and replaying levels two, three, four times to pick up items that you may not have gotten due to, um, you know, if you didn't have abilities or weapons to get there when you went through the first time. Ratchet and Clank is definitely one of those games that the replay value on it is just huge. Okay, so nothing up top. And even like I say, like you saw there where I went through all of those areas, there was nothing up there, but you can't just assume that there's not going to be something there that you'll want to check out. Yeah, I think I've got some issue going on with this controller. Yeah, I definitely have to get a new controller for this thing, I think. Or just take this one apart and really clean it out. The good thing is, even though that I'm having issues with my controller here, the game is still extremely playable. It has nothing to do with the um, adapter cable itself. And I know Ryan at Castlemania Games, he carries aftermarket. Ooh, didn't see that old booger chasing me around. Um, he does carry aftermarket controllers for the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation. So the nanotech, that is, if I remember right, that is your life. And then as you go through here too, you'll be able to pick up the ability to carry more ammo for each weapon. Um, there should be a spot too where you gain the ability to throw your, oh, there it is. Have to hold down the L1 button to be able to throw your wrench. Um, I am really happy with this right now. Um, I think it is time that we wrap things up. So there you have our review of the Pound HD Link Cable for the PlayStation 2. It also works for the PlayStation 1. Now one thing of note, I did try to play some DVDs through it. Even without going through my capture device, it still gives you that green tint. I went back to the main menu and checked everything out and you'll see here, no changes to anything else. It's the proper color. So. It's one of those, it may be a copy protection thing that's built into the pound cable. I am not quite sure. But uh, unfortunately, that's one of the things I, I'm kind of bummed out about is the fact that I, I was hoping to use this as an HDMI equipped DVD player. Doesn't work that way. Uh, but other than that, that's my only real complaint about it. It worked great. Um, as a casual PlayStation and PlayStation 2 player, I thought the picture quality looked good. I thought the audio was fine there was no inherent lag or anything along those lines it's really darn good and compared to let me grab them here compared to the component video cables that you can use for the playstation 2 playstation 1 not compatible with them um, if i was going to use this and wanted to hook up via hdmi i'd have to go through like a retro tank or my ossc a couple hundred bucks this a heck of a lot cheaper now, again, I do need to thank my buddy Ryan over at CastlemaniaGames.com for sending us the pound link cable for the PlayStation 1 and 2. Make sure you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com if you are looking to pick one of these up. The cool thing over there, too, is on all orders, $20 and up, you do get free shipping and handling in the U.S. And in addition to that, on most items on the site, if you use promo code ROX10, you can actually save... 10% off your orders too. I'm actually gonna order a second one of these from Ryan because I want one for both my PlayStation 2 and my PlayStation 1, although technically I guess I could just use my PlayStation 2 to play PS1 games. 
I'll have to think about what I'm going to do there. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. You can always send me an email with your questions too at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios, or we've always got the conversation going over on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Productions. Like I mentioned too, check out Castlemania Ryan at castlemaniagames.com. So much cool stuff on his site there too. Now, if you do want to get early access to all of our video content and help support the channel too, get access to exclusive content, I invite you to join us over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid for as little as a dollar a month. You get early access to our video content, we get exclusive content for you too, and a whole lot more. If you also want to help support us too, you can do so by picking up some Rock Solid Productions merchandise over on our Teespring store. We do have shirts featuring the NES, Super NES, and N64 cartridges with the Rock Solid Productions logo. And everything that we do raise through Patreon, through Streamlabs, through Teespring gets invested right back into the channel. And as I mentioned at the top of this video too, if you like what you see here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. That way each and every time we do come out with new content, you're kept the most up to date. Um, the Pound Technologies HD Link cable, definitely impressed. I'm, I'm really digging this. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I am Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions. I thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.